The views, advice, and opinions of this interview do not reflect those of Doc Bryce Productions, Radio Works, and its affiliates and associates. This is not an endorsement for any particular candidate. All right, we're here tonight uh, here in the city of Camden, Arkansas, uh, here at the Cup of Joe, uh, black-owned business here in the city of Camden, Arkansas. We're here to interview our mayor was a question that I have came up with that I believe that a lot of the people that I've talked to, which are the registered concerned voters in the city, and I want to set a few ground rules that each question, the mayor would have three minutes, as we would do it with that church and hearing, we would have three minutes to discuss or give his answer. After the three minutes to go, I'll be notified by somebody that the three minutes to go will out down, and that's when we're going to go with that. You agree with that, man? I'm going to agree with you. What you way to slap. <laughs> All right. And so we're going to start with this. Everybody knows that I have been very outspoken as a great supporter of the mayor. But here on tonight, I am not that support. I am a community leader in this city that have heard many concerns about the concerned registered voters here in Cameron, Arkansas. And so I wanted to get that out because I'm pretty sure that some will probably question that, but that's where I am because I'm going to say something vividly. The Bible says in Romans 2 and 11, that God has no respect to person, and tonight neither do I. So, but the community is ready to hear about the latest allegation to have been quiet. So, so re- most recently, we were we had allegations against us uh, for sexual harassment, seat. and usually when there is such a suit, a lawsuit, you wouldn't go to the uh, media first. You actually, I would know I'll, there'll be an investigation. After an investigation, there'd probably be some kind of charges. And then I would probably uh, hear from the prosecutor something. There is an actual line of how things are generally done. In this particular case, I was not given any of that. I just got served that the other week, but the media was given everything first. And I understand now that things are going to be leaking like every day or every other day to try me in public opinion. I'm asking uh, that our community give respect the fact that in this particular allegation, uh, I do want to apologize to my family for being drugged into it. My wife didn't choose politics. Church family didn't choose politics. And particularly, I want to give it uh, an apology to our supporters because I do value if the person feels like they have been uh, devalued as a person, uh, someone is constantly bothering them for harassing them, I do respect that. However, in this particular case, I ask that we would withhold judgment, just like we do with other people, uh, allow an individual to be tried actually in the court of law. I have a met those uh, those requirements that would normally be afforded to other people. They weren't afforded to me. I didn't, I didn't get it. I had to read it in the newspaper. I had to read it another way. Uh, I just started getting phone calls where everybody, where others had received it and I had not. And like I said, you know the day I got served. She had 120 days to serve me. And in those 120 days, I waited. And of course, it was, it was right after the actual, uh, when, when I, we were told they sent the runoff, that the next shoe dropped. And so we're expecting a shoe to drop each and every day. And I asked the community to withhold judgment and give us an opportunity because there's a place for it to be tried. Remember, this is civil, not criminal. So it's a civil case, uh, which means that the, at, at worst, the person could probably get money. But I want you to actually know the context of that actual note. I mean, of that, of what I said, the context, there were other people sitting there, right? Uh, they, those people will have to be identified because now they become witnesses. So we don't have the right to choose who we're going to persecute. 
Well, in this case, I hope Dave is under process in this. Okay, yes, sir. The next question is, there has been a audio that has come out. And the first question I want to know is, when does that audio take place? I, I don't have the audio itself. I, I understand that I heard the audio, so let me start here. In that particular conversation, the reason I'm talking about context, man, is because if that is what I remember talking about, I remember that being an explanation of why the Greek and the Hebrew should be involved in Bible study. And how strange it may sound, sometimes you judge your audience to know how to explain something. For example, I'll explain in the different types of sin. And in the Greek, there are nine terms for sin. In the Hebrew, there are four. Of the nine kinds of sin, or the nine different words for sin, in the New Testament, there is parabasis and paraptain. Parabasis means to step over the mark, and paraptain means to slide with the fall. So if a person falls or slips into a sin, it's different than a person stepping into sin, because some sins are unintentional. In that particular example that I was giving, I did two things. Number one, I said, if Nancy went out of town and I went to Walmart and I was standing in Walmart and an old classmate came through, which I graduated, I didn't graduate here, but if an old classmate comes through, we meet up, we start talking, blah, 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 blah. I may have slipped, but if I were to make a call and set something up, that is to step into it. Then you have other words like anomia, uh, her hematia, hetema, and uh, it's a mean word. But those were the two that I was talking about. It was easier to give a demonstration of the difference than it was to give a definition. That is 14 seconds. When we've seen shootings or anything else, our community has always said, what happened before or what happened after? And from what I understand, it takes time to, to possibly doctor some of this stuff and so I don't know, but pay attention to the sounds you hear in the background just in case a sound changes in the midst of some of the conversation. The other people there, wouldn't you wait to hear them gasp if I was sitting there boasting about something like that? Wouldn't you want to hear if they said, oh, I can't believe he's talking like that? Okay, with the recording, the press release that went out today, when was this recording? It was said that she stated. It was around the COVID-19 pandemic response. So that would have been about two years ago. And also it was stated, can you elaborate what you mean when you said part of it might have been it? All right. So first of all, we do know that something had to have been said before. Something had to have been said after. So it would be important if the word if was in front of it, or if I just started out saying Nancy's going out of town, so I did. And so that's important. Number two, I wasn't talking. If you listen to the way it sounds, it doesn't sound like I'm coming on to her, which is the allegation. The allegation is not uh, that I'm the land of involved in all the indebted. The actual allegation that that particular one is about the fact that I'm coming on to her. That is not the way a typical person, I guess, would, be, would come on to this. So if this was during the COVID-19 and we were down there at the uh, at 625 South Adams, the business interface, then we often had conversations about uh, the Bible and so many other topics. And in the midst of those conversations, uh, we talked about a little bit of every, everything we could think of. We talked about President Trump. Uh, we talked about the governor. We had phone calls with them, and we set a phone in the middle of the room. All this information is right there in, in front of us. Mayors had calls. We had calls. Everybody. Because this was the pandemic, everything was brand new, and so we had an opportunity to talk. So in other words, you're just waiting on, and we're waiting on full uh, recordings and talk to Well, I don't know if you'll get the rest of that recording without discovery. I think what we're waiting on now is every day something like that is probably getting ready to drop. Because you can take any of that out of context, and if we're not committed to who is best to lead the city, that's the issue. Who is best to lead the city? Not who has lived uh, in, in this way that they're expecting or saying that everybody's got to do. Because I just sat in another, administ on another administration where people explained the way things that they wanted me to understand. Oh, don't worry about how you talk. This is policy. Look at my policy. 
Look over how I talk and look at my policy. That was a poor example. It was a terrible example to use, but it was an example I was using to explain something else. It was not my outing myself in a public forum. Now, one thing that I was looking for, and a lot of people that I've talked to, with, um, Mr. Mayor, is an apology, which you four stated earlier. And a lot of people, especially a lot of female voters uh, that I've talked to in the city, uh, was wondering, again, you've explained the silence, different stuff like that, but they were looking for a formal apology as a sitting mayor that they were looking for. And so earlier, you kind of instituted that in that about the apology. So we can move on from that. Well, they, allow me. Allow me, yes, sir. sir. I do apologize. I do not make little of people who actually deal with being abused, the people who deal with such a quest. I apologize. That was not what the conversation was about. However, I can understand how a person on the surface, without the court case, without the allegation, without the charge, without any of those things, I can understand how a person could think that that was exactly what I, what I was doing. However, I'm asking that the community, with that apology, also understand that with my repentance, I'm asking to still yield this time to go before the actual court, where we can have discovery, we can actually bring in facts, they'll have to pay, play the whole audio, uh, and there may be more stuff that people may like to hear, make more gory detail, but you cannot judge my whole life in 14 seconds. I apologize for that statement. That statement was only to give an example. I was not talking under her clothes. And neither have people experienced me in that way in the city. And if they have, if they have done that, I apologize to them. But it's not a laundry list of people coming out saying this is who he is. Okay. okay. Now, in both of your press releases, you refer to individuals. They want to stop your progress in the work in Camden and move forward. When you said some people, who were you with the <laughs> That's kind of precise. So when I first moved here, when I first moved here in 1999, I was pastoring a church in Luang, and people were talking about the city, and they told me it would take 12 feelings in order for this city to go through. And people gave me a list of them. If you'll allow me to just allude to that without calling names, some of those people have that. And there were other people waiting to take their place. There's a gentleman who told a guy who works for me, I don't care what it costs, we're getting such and such out of that office. And so they're willing to spend the money because this is not about what you think. This is about control and controlling this city. What has happened in our city is uh, that a lot of people he moved out outside of the city and they still want to control the inside of the city. Name. And it's an inner city type of issue where uh, a lot of people who, didn't, who weren't as affluent or influential are uh, beginning to get those opportunities because even uh, since I've been mayor, our median house income has grown uh, according to the U.S. Census. And so if we look at the prosperity of our people, the demographics have changed. And with 60% black inside the city, 60% are white in the county, sometimes we play that. Uh, to an advantage, and now that people have moved out to those areas outside, it's difficult to run the city without a vote in the city. And so they have to poison the way so that people who would support and would try. Because at the end of the day, this race has something to do with race. As one of the, one of the contenders said, well, you don't have to vote for him because he's black. To a black person. To a black person, I used to live in Mississippi, so when I hear dog whistles and stuff, I'm like, well, you don't have to not vote for him because he's black, really. What if someone said that about a woman? Would you stop him from saying that about, well, you don't have to uh, vote for him because he's a man? You know, so we have to be mindful of when people are using these tropes or using uh, some of these ideas that they have to hold us back. If this individual wasn't speaking to you before she ran, why don't she speak to you now? Ask yourself that. If she wasn't walking in your community before now, why would she walk with me? If she's visiting churches, why hasn't she visited yours? Have I been to other churches? And yes, I have. Even before I was a mayor, I was even an assistant mayor, giving me an opportunity to know the community in which I serve. 
I, I'm not bought out, and that is the real issue. The people who are fighting are fighting for control. And you know their name. People know their name. I don't have to embarrass myself by calling a name I may miss one or two. But the bottom line is, if you're waiting on them to die, you don't have to let them die. You can live in this city. And let's make it happen. Okay, my next question to you, Mr. Mayor. Before running for office in 2018, have you ever worked in government? I have. And, of course, under, the, under Mayor Theresa Lini, I had the privilege of serving as the assistant to the mayor, uh, which you don't necessarily have the assistant mayor, but the assistant to the mayor. And when I was on my way to a garbage dump, because I have a, a lawn care business, I was on my way to a garbage dump and she gave me a call, and it was because we were in the same meetings. We were in meetings where sometimes I was the only black person at that meeting. But I wanted to know what was going on in the city. I didn't have aspirations for politics. But I knew with the poverty level in our city that we qualified for some grants that we had not properly applied for. And we needed to come up as a community. And when I say as a community, I'm talking about all of them. So I also was at the same time teaching, of course, uh, getting ahead in a just getting by world to help people overcome poverty. So we've gotten it at the grassroots and we've worked and we've worked. That group that you're talking about called me to a meeting at Allen's Restaurant. They did pay for the meal that day, but they called me there to tell me to get out of the race. That same group of guys in a democracy. That's what makes it possible for any of us to get involved in politics. The guy says, you don't have, a, you don't have by your own admission, you don't have enough money to run the race. And I said, we're not judging it by money. I think this time they're going to go by votes. And people showed up and they showed up when, when things were happening over and over and over again, constant fight. They came and they showed up and they said, okay. My next question, when you ran for the office in 2018, what was your plan? The platform in 2018 was the same as the platform now with the uh, addition. Pattern. Now, the first time voice is a vision, opportunity, integrity, community development and economic development. With the I, we also involve infrastructure. When we got into office, there is what we call bureaucracy. And bureaucracy is a big deal. There may be a problem in the city. You can't just run and fix that problem because you see a problem. You have to check for an item line in the budget. You have to make sure that you're following the protocol, their resolutions and their ordinances. There are different things that you have to know about the city in order to get things done. And my counterpart at this point uh, has not always followed those particular protocols to help us to get things done. We're supposed to be working with organizations, working with different groups to make things happen, but we have to follow those rules. Every business needs to follow the same rules so that it makes, every, makes it an even and fair playing. Churches, everybody needs to make sure that we're doing things in a similar manner so that all of us have the same advantage. So when we ran in the boys with the boys platform, infrastructure was the thing that we had to add to this go round because there were some streets that haven't been touched since 1926. They have not been fixed. I'm not talking about just some, some thrown in a hole. Carter Street, some of those streets were in horrible condition. And we had to go back and, and face the fact that we have not done things in certain wards that were necessary for people to be able to travel even to school. Our like children were bouncing up and down on the school bus. And when we started doing things like that, it really gave an advantage to our community at large. Because as, 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 as the tide rises, all of us rise together. Okay, let's start with economic development. Let's start. How <laughs> did Camden Downtown Network come to be? I'm glad you asked. Before I came tonight, I went and I started trying to pull up some things. So I got all these papers kind of strolled out here because I don't know which direction you're going to go. Uh, but for you to start there, when I became mayor, we have already been, we had already been ousted from the Main Street program in the state uh, uh, some years ago. And so some people wanted to get back in Main Street. But in order to do that, they had to come through the city. All right? The city is going to have to be involved in this particular project. So uh, a young lady comes and she says, well, we really want to do that. So we went and met, in the, met at, at City Hall, right there in the council uh, chamber, two people from Little Rock and a couple people from Camden. We sat there and we struck up a deal to get us going. 
after we were able, this is the agreement from uh, 2020. I, I became, I was voting in 18, my first day was January 1 of uh, 2019. And we agreed to do $2,500. But also, the county did some money, gave some money also. And that's the agreement that we had. On page two of this particular agreement, uh, it says that they're going to come to force once a year to give an update and to uh, take questions. But it also says that they're going to work with us, not compete with us. And that's where the challenges come. Because now that Camden Downtown Network has its own set of scissors. Before now, whenever you would come to the city to open a business, if you came to cut on water, the water company would say, hey, have you talked to the coal enforcement? Because you'd have to go through the proper channel. But if you go around the city, some people don't have businesses. Some people start projects, and when they get in the middle of a project, we come in and say, hey, you can't put an open file, open flag. You can't fry food in this kind of establishment. People live up top. Those are state regulations and laws that we don't have power over. And so we have to abide by them. But if you start building something and doing something, and you've not followed the proper protocols, imagine how much money you waste. And that's the danger of going around the city when we already have established protocols that to go through that make it fair for everybody. And I want to encourage people who are listening to please, 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 if you're operating a business in the city, please get your business license if you do business in the city. And for the first time in the history, one of our groups has been in contract with the city for the first time, got their license this year. They weren't forced to get their license. And they've been making money off of the city for a long time. And, and so now that we're trying to play the game fair, it's upsetting some people. And you've got to understand why they're mad. And they ought to be mad because it gives everybody a, a level playing. So, next question, what is their thing? The, okay, so I began looking at that. And I'm, like I said, I'm glad I did that. So it said that they're going to promote activities throughout the year to draw traffic to downtown Camden. We, we have to make sure that all of our businesses are around so when they focus on downtown, that's going to be an important arm for them. And they encourage and work closely with the downtown tenants. So that is the contract, not to be competitive, to help build strong working relationship between downtown merchants with the appropriate public agents and to develop and conduct ongoing public awareness designed to enhance the appreciation of downtown architecture, things like that. Now, the issue that we've been uh, hitting uh, also, you know, when you talk about that, the, the Tamina Downtown Network, is that when we contracted with them to do it, she's doing what she's supposed to do. But she was never supposed to, to she was, it was a contract, not competition. So she was never supposed to go and, she was supposed to work in tandem with the city, with paying her in a contract. Like, not go down there and get a pair of scissors and compete with the uh, Chamber of Commerce. That, that, wasn't what, that's, that wasn't what was supposed to happen. We were supposed to be highlighting and pointing to each other to build Team Camp, which is OPED, CAIDC, it is also the City of Camden, and other entities to work together to be one cohesive group. But when you do the I, me, my, I did, I feel, I did. When I was taking pictures, some people got online and said, all he does is take pictures. So I came offline taking pictures and just started taking them for myself and putting them up because it's still history. And then someone hops up the other day and says, he doesn't take any pictures. We don't ever know what he's doing. I'm the one who literally, literally have put all of our meetings online. I, I apologize when people can't hear them, but the bottom line is I'm trying. And we have people who walk in, it's not even their mic, which would be disrespectful. First thing they do is start adjusting the mic because they don't want you to hear the sidebar talk. So when they move the mic, what can I do? I, we've already adjusted them to where the mic isn't touching the wood because that means every time they move, you're going to hear an extra sound. So we moved it away. We had it set before people came. So I'm telling you, we've tried to be transparent. We tried to put everything out there as best we could. And we're finding ourselves, you know, just in custom types of battle over foolishness. We take the pictures. I've been at, God is my witness, I have been at some of these uh, ribbon cuttings, and I've stood there while others have been asked to be in the picture. I was just over here at a ribbon cut, God is my witness, when a voice 
of someone says, some of these people here wasn't invited. I'm sorry if I don't sound like a, but the point is that that's not right. All of us should be welcome to a ribbon cutting in the city. This business is a business that, that ought to want more than just one or two people here. And if you look at those pictures, go through those pictures, not only is the city of Camden not in those pictures, but neither is the Chamber of Commerce in a lot of those pictures. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Isn't that a business? I, in the Chamber of Important Heart. So while you're leaving out people, we're leaving out some of the major players in our city. And you've got to know that you've got to work with that code in this. My next question. Your opponent, Ms. Charlotte Young, is she all for the record? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was an easy question. <laughs> hey. Next question. So you are in a runoff now with Miss Charlotte Young. She claims she got a lot for the downtown community. She made a Facebook post five years ago that said more small business owners. That was trusted Charlotte to get them done. Two that they need to grow them than any other candidate. That's even as an unpaid all right. And the question is, uh, uh, I, I don't agree. I, I don't agree with that. Um, we, as a community, generally use the term we for public works. When we have prescribing, those are some things that have worked against the city. So let me show you how it works. If you were part of a festival, you come into the festival and you come to uh, JJ, L, J, JJ's uh, festival and say, I hand you a packet. That packet says, fill out your tax papers, tell us who you are, and this and that. At the end of that, you're trusted to hand that back in. Out of 70 benefits, three of them, this is not all her fault, but three of them actually pay their tax. So not only have we taken business from our local merchant, but you've also taken the opportunity that we have of getting taxes in our whole city. So don't talk to me about the poverty here. There's structures set in place for money to come. But we need people in place who follow the rules. There were people who put thought into these taxes. So we need those people who are coming here taking this money in Camden to leave the taxes here, the taxes are not your money. You said you were charging one dollar for a piece of pizza. If you charge one dollar and ten cents, you lie, because that ten cent ain't yours. That ten cent go to somebody else. You are lying. You, you're not going to the right way. Give the ten cent to who you said they go to. When you take that money out of our community, it hurts us. That's how we take care of our business. And if you're talking about fixing streets, if you're talking about education, if you're talking about making things done for those who are coming behind us, that taxation is going to be a very critical part to doing that. We need some money coming in. And I just want to be very clear that when we're, when we're doing that, it's not only on her, it's on those businesses. But they shouldn't be able to keep coming back, raping our city, and cheating our merchants. If you're sitting out on the street laying down going to build them, then you're going to store and let them try to get room. We need to protect our merchants. And that ain't just downtown, it's all over our city for any businesses who want to drive in Canada, because you can live here. Next question. Of all the businesses that she has assisted in, public and city, no, sir. As a matter of fact, um, I'm glad you asked. I, this is actually, um, and for some reason, I just printed to be able to read to have my facts together uh, so that I wouldn't uh, be misleading. And this is actually uh, one, of the way, one of the things where there is a group that we deal with called Swap D. Swap D is Southwest Arkansas Planning and Development District. This is the stream of tips where she actually went around the city trying to get grants, and they ended up calling us because the grants seem to have to come through the city or the county. You can't just go and get the grants. So when they call, I say, what are you doing? I mean, you know, what happened? So I went straight over there. It's, it's in Magnolia. And this is the string of texts. And I was there 
just, just out of the reality. I'm just si simply saying that when you see the questions on here, God says, Mayor, I'm sorry. He says, I thought she was just asking general questions on behalf of the sick. I didn't know that she wasn't sitting. And this is the paperwork uh, from that. This is the, uh, they sent me all the past conversations and they let me read what she was saying and the questions that she asked. And some of these are some real good things that the city is already doing, we're already working on. But the bottom line is when you start, when she went over there and started talking to them, they, they were led to believe that we sent her there. And that's not necessarily, well, that's not the truth. Right? So, so she's not, she's not working with us. The businesses she's bringing in, she's not telling them about us. And some of the businesses are angry with us because they had to do what's called a soft open. A soft open means that the body department had been to your building to verify how many people can come in, how many can be in there at one time for occupancy. A soft open means that you're not, quite, you're not ready to open because our soft part of hell hadn't seen you yet. We have a pamphlet and we actually, it got so bad at one point that she was called into City Hall and she was walked through the process to say, we ain't trying to stop what you can, you can keep on doing what, because we're supposed to be working together, right, in time. So if we're working together, keep doing what you're doing, but do it the legal way and stop wasting any people's time and money telling them that you are the way home. When the truth of the matter is, it costs too much money to start over, and we need to do it the right way the first time. All right? So the city, the city, the chamber of commerce connected. They are directly connected to this. Okay, next question. If Miss Young is not going to the city hall to the business, what about the chain? Does she work in unisys with them? I can't speak for anything except the last meeting that we had. And in the last meeting that we were in, uh, the chamber has generally been over the parade, the Christmas parade. And so last year, it, it was uh, it moved slowly, and it was moving slowly because of the interference. This year, uh, they were just asked to get on board with the other uh, with, uh, with the other group to make it come to pass. So I can't speak. Uh, we made the appointment of the Reverend Greg Meadows, who is now the president, and we worked very closely with Ms. with Ms. Beth, Beth Olstein, who serves as the executive director for the Chamber of Commerce. However, I can honestly say that I don't know how well they worked together. I know that I have called them to be a part of some of the ribbon cuttings when I heard about it. And they showed up at that ribbon cutting. They heard about it 20 minutes beforehand uh, because when we got the word, we got there immediately. And uh, so they only had 20 minutes to get there. So if we're working together, one city, or let me borrow a phrase, United Camden, then you wouldn't be mad. If the chamber showed up, you wouldn't be mad if the city showed up, if it's a united camp, right? All right, that's the unity we're talking about. Okay, and this, when I lived in Las Vegas, I used to come down and they talked about the big ball. First ride. Okay, let's ship the first ride. My first question about first ride, how did they come about and who was in there? Okay, so first ride, I believe, was a part of the South Park group, and First Friday became an independent group. What happens is the city of Camden has, uh, the mayor exercises certain rights, and so what we did was we waived all fees to allow First Friday to every year we have to say you can do it. But whenever you do them, you also have to, so she's behind that, the First Friday. But whenever you do them, whenever we block off a state highway such as Highway 7, or 248, 27, whenever we block off a state highway, we have to have permission from the state. So when it was canceled last, this month, and stated that it was going to be on the 18th, the city was not contacted. So the city, you can't ask them to close down the state highway. It goes to the mayor's office. So we had to go in to keep them, to save base, or to keep them being uh, you don't want to become like the people who messing with you, right? So I didn't, I could have used it as an opportunity and said, hey, if it didn't come here in time, I don't have, because we do have rules of how long we need to get the state to respond. And that's how simple it was. 
we allow and help to push everything through to try to make sure that it can still happen. That's the group that's behind it. We allow them not to pay any fees. All the money goes straight back into their coffers. And um, so we don't, we don't count their money. We don't know how much they have. We know they have seven vendors, and we know that only three of them come back and pay taxes. That's what we should. So, you, so you're telling me that even though it wasn't done properly, wanted to be a unified family, wanted to bring them together, you as a sitting mayor went on and in this day. I allowed that in part because the rumor was that I was anti-business and that I was fighting business. Well, if we let all the tax, if we let all of our merchants who are paying for overhead suffer as a result, number one, we're blocking up parking for them. Don't forget that. If someone wants to come over there and shop now, he's got to park down there and walk. Every one of us look for the closest parking space we could find. So, so now, I have just stopped that business from making money. And then you're going to let somebody else take the money back out of town with them. It's a difficult decision to make, but I didn't want to be seen as anti-business and in the middle of a race, it gets hyped up because while I'm willing to meet on the camera and in front of everybody, she's not having to. I'm excited because next Monday, we're going to have an actual debate. I mean, I would love to be able to sit in the room and actually say something back whenever something is said that's not true. But I've never been given the opportunity to sit in a room with her and say, will you tell the truth to these people so they can know that it is one camera, that we are trying to work together. But what happens when a person shows up with an I need mean, my type of attitude, it's difficult to work with a person who only wants to say, I did this and beat my chest. We went to work. So when I've had my head down working, I forgot to tell people, oh, that was us who did Carter Street. Oh, that was us who did Josh. Oh, that was us who did so-and-so. I forgot to tell you all the good stuff that we were doing because we were so busy doing the work. So don't punish me because I didn't brag. And if you're going to talk about a track record, let's actually talk about a track record in bureaucracy because running a business and running a city are two totally different things. Bureaucracy. If something happens to one of my lawnmowers and I need a blade, I go straight to the store and purchase a blade if I have the money. That's not how a city works. I can spend up to $35,000 as a mayor, and that's it. We don't have $35,000 problem. I have to go and sit in front of eight people and ask them, can we buy machines that we need? That's, that's where we are as a city. And when I came in, most of the machines uh, were broken. That's my, is that my key? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't hear well, so when I heard the ding, I said, I got to shut up. Okay. Okay, all right. Go ahead. Okay, Mayor. Now, my understanding is the concept of First Friday was to spotlight Camden business. Now, when I go to First Friday, I see a lot of outside business. So how can we explain that? If those vendors were coming here and paying taxes, I would, I would be a little quiet. But there's no accountability there. They're taking our money from our community. And we know that if a person makes $10 and spends three of them, he only has seven unless he has a heck of a hustle. So when we consider that the right way, when our money leaves town, that money is gone. So we have to protect the uh, actual merchants in our community. And in order to do that, we're going to have to hold those people who are having these events accountable. When I came in, it used to cost $600 a year for a food truck to come. We brought the price down to $50 for the food truck and $2 per employee to allow, the, to allow them to, to be able to come into our city. And we all know it doesn't take but three or four orders to even get $50 right now. You know, depending on what kind of event it is, it may not take but two or three, you know. But the bottom line is we have to protect the investment in our community. Yes, there are grants available to help fix some of our buildings. We have two opportunity zones in our city, I mean, in our, uh, in our county. Those opportunity zones are, are chance, opportunities that people have to build on the fact that we dealt with poverty or a type of depression in the past. We need to get that money. We just did a whole new, a whole new Spring Harrison district. The Spring Harrison District, because we had Washington uh, District, historical district, 
Now we have Spring and Harrison District. Those people have opportunities to improve their homes with government grants. But we have to work together as a community, and we need to sit down and make sure that we have a plan. And if we're trying to become a bedroom city, which we had CDI to come in, we had a SIF study done, CDI uh, Community Development Institute from um, UCA uh, in Conway, University of Arkansas Conway, and we said we didn't want to be a bedroom town. Well, if we don't want to be a bedroom town and we don't want to be just governed by one particular group of people or one particular congregation, then we're going to have to wake up and see that it's important that we push forward as a community and not go back because going back is not going back. It's actually going backward. There's some people who are going to take us back very far. You don't know how far we're talking about when I say far, far back. We're going to have to stand together as a community. Black and white, man and woman, get in straight and say, we want to move forward. If you keep complaining about the wizard behind the curtain, he ain't as big as you think he is. We're empowering those people that keep making the city. That guy says, I will pay, I don't care what it costs, we'll pay whatever it takes to get him out of office. We, that's the group. And if you're protecting that group, if you're protecting a group of people who you know are anti and against everybody, you're the wrong person to lead this city. Do not protect them. We don't want to do that anymore. We want to move forward. We want our children to come back home. Why are we out here begging people to move here from uh, Massachusetts and to move here from these, these engineers to move in here? We have children in our own schools who already like it here. Let's make sure they're ready to come and take these jobs. But in order to be more attractive, we're going to have to say yes to something besides going to church. And that means that we don't, when we did the, what, 622, 0622, when we allowed these restaurants to be able to sell alcohol in their restaurant, that's a big deal. That's pro-business. When people get ready to leave work, they want to chill out. If you don't drink rubber, that's good for you. But if someone else is an adult and wants an adult beverage, they ought to be able to do what they want to do, too. So we have to stop saying no and say yes to something. Okay. Now, your opponent is Sean and Y'all. On first Friday, do a lot of photo ops. So my question to you is, does Camden make money at first price? And where is the account of it? We have three businesses that pay, that pay tax. And that's a fair answer. So one more time. Six percent goes directly to the state. I don't control that. You voted. Right? So it's six or six point five. Then you have one point, I think uh, one point seven five is all the city of Camden gets. So those people are paying those taxes. Then, of course, you got county taxes, which is no longer give us I think it's like 2.5. But, but the point is, yeah, 6.5, 2.5, and 1 and 7. But as a community, when they're receiving those money, when she's getting paid a flat fee, and the city's only getting three, three businesses out of seven that pay taxes, which means a portion of what they sold. You tell me, we don't make any money. It's not, it's not that money made for the city. It's not, it's not that there's no money being made. We waive the fees for First Friday. They get to do that thing for free. Now, the merchants, it costs them. The city, it costs us. Excuse me, it costs us. And we're going to have to put a system in place that works for the city and not for a politician. Okay. Now, my next question. You're quoting support. I'm saying that you haven't done anything since you've been in office. Let's talk about what you've done since you've been. All right. Now, at last, we get to my. All right. So, again, in my profession, we're not taught to boast. You do right because it's the right thing to do. You don't do right for the accolades of men. This sheet is a sheet that talks about streets that just so happened to be in Wars 2 and 2. Maple Street, Willow Street, Glassell, Wood, A.G., Iowa, Orange, A. Apple, Brooks, Dunning, South Apple, Jack Park, Carver. Carver had a hole so big, if you wanted to bounce, you could just ride down that street and get your little bounce on Oklahoma, 
Fearing, Tate, Boulder, Dooley, Walmart. We did that one because the school is on that one in particular. Holly Hill, that may be a little different for Can. Now keep in mind, if we went, it costs $100,000 per mile. $100,000 per mile. We didn't do streets in 20 and 21. We've also demolished, we've taken down over 20 houses with blight. When you knock down one raggedy house, 10 houses gave back. For every one raggedy piece of property, we need to get out of the way. And when we tear them down, we take it down to where you can build all over. All right? Now, we got a minute. When I, did, when I came into office, uh, Executive Order number 47, when I first came in, only police and fire were allowed to get education and incentives, and only police and fire were allowed to get certificate pay. Now, no city worker gets paid under $12 and two cents. Now, uh, because of that executive order, others who go to school and learn different things are now getting paid. When I came in, we didn't have a way of improving our workforce except to tell people, go get a job no matter what it pays. So we went back now, we did March amnesty in 2020, and we did August amnesty in 2022. We restored 60 driver's licenses this year through that program. Driver's license, where people can actually drive to work. What have we done? I hope you're giving them more than three minutes. In 2019, April, the Abram Estates Project joined Camden and the Chamber of Commerce uh, because we were getting ready to, do, to build some houses. Someone, because the Abram, uh, in April of 2019, Abram Estate, someone took a, um, a petition, went through the community and said, the mayor is trying to put public housing in our neighborhood. And they went door to door and convinced the people that I was doing public housing. It was going to have a home owner's agreement that all of the houses had to have a, a, a driveway so that you wouldn't park in the grass. And it was going to make sure that all our people grew up together. And the rule is that when poor and rich people grew up together, even the poor people can take advantage of the richness or of the money that the, uh, that the richer people have in the way they think and the way they operate. So you don't go poor people on one side of town, on one side of the tracks, and rich people on the other side of the track. If you're building a community, we got to grow up together so we can learn how to walk in unity before we get grown. The reason some of us ran for the way with actors is because we don't remember when we were a child, how things went when you went to school and you played with your friends. And in, uh, in Mar on March 30, 2019, Camden native Patricia Nunn Brown came and did a course for Minority and Women, and Women Business Workshop. She was a native from here, came back, taught a class. Many of us attended that class. And people who've been talking about money were able to connect with people who were able to point you to money. We did some roof work uh, at City Hall. We started that in, in May of 29. In ordinance number 1019, I mentioned to you already, the transient vendor fee went from $600 to $50. Uh, the Camden and Washtenaw County worked together to bring a 16,000 cynic solar plant. Just to give you three more minutes. Three more. I'm going to ask you. Yeah, I'm going to ask you. <laughs> next question. Yes. What you're doing now. Uh -huh. Can you give some examples of what you've accomplished? All right. This is going to give me three months. So i got to go fast. Then <laughs> we had an informational meeting for young people who didn't know how to handle traffic stops. We were seeing things on a national scale. So to be proactive instead of reactive, we decided to bring the police chief to come and explain how to handle the police stop. New Haven brought a whole youth department. And our community, old and young, was sitting in the same room together learning what to do if a police pulls you over. In September of 2019, we got approved for $27,000 to do the interlocking basketball court there at Conn's Park. Remember when they did the splash pad, they premised those young they were going to give them a basketball court. The court had never come into fruition. We did an interlocking basketball court for us. And then people complained about how dark it was. Guess what? We said, let there be light. LED lights are down there on the basketball court. In December of 2020, we gave all the women, uh, Eileen Galber, the key to the city from War 3. I'm proud of that because she has served for 25 years. We did the Camden Disco 
which was designed by Jared Brent Ray in September of 2020. Now, again, in uh, Mildred McKinney, Margaret was moved from her home over to Carnes Park by the African American Historical Commission. George Floyd, after the George Floyd murder, after his murder, we held community, I give another three minutes, right? That threw me off. Uh, we held a community round table, and I did a peaceful rally with the police in the rally. What other communities were talking about, defund the police, they were fighting, and they were burning down their city, burning down their courtyard. The city of Cameron marched together, law enforcement and citizens, heads in hand. And Lou Baker held up a sign and said, I didn't do it. I'm sorry you went through it. God love and, and that's, that's what community is. It's not meeting with a certain group on one side of town. It's not going just to one church. It's going to the people in the community. It's not making a bunch of promises to people, telling them what you're going to give them and what you're going to do. But what are you going to do for everybody? All right, let's go. So then, uh, of course, let's go. Uh, 50, uh, the city made over $50,000 in the public auction on November 6th. I see some recipients here. In 2020, we had a $1 million surplus. And the city of Cameron got a $300,000 grant for teen town renovation. We were basically used the roof, making it ADA accessible. In Resolution 4821, we did a 50-50 grant to fix the gazebo at Sandy Beach. We mentioned here already that we had the, the Spring Harrison Preservation District, but we also have renovations for the city shop roof. We put flashing lights at the trace, and there are also flashing lights at the crosswalk on Cash Road at Lincoln Center. Then under our administration, because I was hitting somebody one day over over there by Lincoln Center, and I think people were changing clothes, putting on dark clothes just to get in front of my car, but they, but they weren't. You have to hit that light now, and it works. Under our administration, the Frio Creek, Washtenaw River, and North Bayou, Two Bayou watershed will receive $11 million to fix the flooding in our city. Not only that, and we, we've been approved for all four stages, planning, design, construction, everything. And then on top of that, I'm happy to say that we brought $96 million, $95.9 million to our state through Arkansas Black Mayors. And we asked for redistricting. We did get something like redistricting because we didn't want to be gerrymandered anymore in 1986. Somebody decided we should have two black districts and two white districts. That's illegal. And we stood up against it. I did not win the way we wanted to win. We had a chase out of the dollar person to draw it out to where the people were even. We didn't win it, but we did get some movement. And that was 70 people to another group. I'm almost there. And of course, um, well, all right, I guess um, we're not, we're not out of words about that. All right, they gotta make money. <laughs> Yeah. All right. And so we are located well past. We are here at Cooper Joe, right here downtown, which happened to be a black owned business. Um, Courtney Page and Jennifer Page, the proprietors. So we're here tonight with our mayor uh, and his first uh, public interview. Uh, so we just thank God tonight. Uh, that we were allowed to come in, in. I want to state that I appreciate them because they're not open for Monday, and they also uh, came from a, a game with their son just to make sure we were able to hold a dish right here at a black home business right here uh, in the city of Camden, Arkansas. Uh, so we'll get back to the question. Now, me being a... ALE teacher at Camden Craven Middle School, which I'm proud of. A lot of people ask me, how can I deal with those youth? Because I am a project kid. I live here in Lincoln Center in Fort Lookout. Yes, sir. And so my next question to you, because all I'm hearing from a lot of our young people in this city that I talk to because I get them involved, is there's nothing here for our young people to do. So my, my question is, what things have you done what activities have you done to create some stuff for our youth? So we, and I want to go backward, but let me do the, the, the most recent. We have been working together with what we now call a sports, youth sports exploratory committee. 
And we are trying now to figure out the right direction to go. I don't want to get too far ahead in that particular conversation, but I want to be fair and say that many years ago, the city uh, decided to do a non-compete clause with the Boys and Girls Club, and so we can't operate a sports program at the same time that they do if it's a, if it's a similar sport. So if they're playing basketball, we can't offer basketball. If they're playing soccer, we can't offer soccer. If they're playing baseball, we can't offer. So we have to do it in the off season. So we can have fall ball or something like that. Well, that non-compete clause is something that's up for discussion. But we have a, uh, the Boys and Girls Club of what is now known as the Washtenaw Recreational uh, uh, Center is now, uh, they are, they have a 99 year, one dollar uh, lease. And so we're going to have to work with them to figure out what is the best route for our community. But let's talk about what we have done. When I came in, that was, we didn't have a baseball field suited. Now, the first year, we had to outsource. So we had a company come in, fix our baseball fields, and keep them operational. Then we went and bought our own equipment, and now we're able to run that, uh, to, to do the baseball field ourselves, and we ran a tournament. Because of the size of the fields and the, the current design of the field, we had to go on and uh, use Ivory Park and Collins Park at the same time. But the people loved hopping in the vehicle, driving there, doing this and that. It was a beautiful, uh, a beautiful tournament. But we've also, we got the baseball, the basketball court up and running. We also, this year, were able to get the pool back up and running. What's that pool? Because it's the only Olympic sized pool. Uh, in, in this area. Matter of fact, South Arkansas and North Indiana, we have the only Olympic size pool. And it's a public pool. So we've been working diligently to make activities for our children. However, as the city, you don't want the city to own Magic Spring. That would mean Magic Spring, Magic Springs will be open from eight in the morning to four to five o'clock in the afternoon. So what we do is we support private entities that want to make those types of investment. Now, to show you a bad example, then I'll show you a good one. When I first became mayor, so gung ho, so excited. I got on the phone, I said, hey, to a gentleman who had run against this person, I said, hey, you know all those promises you made? Let's sit down and have a cup of coffee, lunch of breakfast is at me, and let's talk about how we can do that. When he gets finished with the meeting, I asked him, I said, go, go get those investors you were talking about. Let's go and do this. And he turns around, and I get an email uh, from one of our city councilmen. Julian, I think it's wonderful uh, what you're talking about, but we're going to take a wait and see a person. We're going to wait to see how you think before we make an investment in the city. Well, you're lost. So what I say to the gentleman is, if we figure out a way to do it without you, I'm not coming back through. That's how I feel about it. So then a gentleman who has the meaning has about going and purchasing the old Walmart. He wants to do something for young people. So I make the call. I say, hey, got somebody on the line that they didn't know about the old Walmart. How can we connect him? Blah, blah, blah. About an hour later, two gentlemen show up in my office. One question. Who is this investor? Well, I mean, I ain't got to give up nothing. They gave me nothing. You know? <laughs> Why should I give up the investor? And they work and they fish and they fish till they find out who the investor is. And the end of it was no, because they didn't have. If you give the city to these people, you're going to set the city back to them. I'm asking you to consider how long it's taken us to get to this place. We've had blacks to wonder things. Unsuccessful. You finally got somebody in there. They're going to do everything they can. I'm talking about the establishment. I'm not talking about white people. I'm talking about the establishment. It's going to do everything they can to fight me. I would not be surprised if every single day something drops in part. And none of it. Listen for the background because there are people who can doctor on to make it sound like something that is not. Listen to make sure you're hearing what you're hearing and that you're hearing. Because if you allow 14 seconds to alter the course of our city and take us back, then you too will have to answer for what we're doing right like. It is the telling that we understand that I, as a preacher, was fully entertained with Christian. Not to get drunk. If I want to drink, I ain't going to get out there and drink in your streets like that. That ain't what I voted for. I voted for the entertainment district for our community, not for my charity. It was not a church 
Saturn is not a physical issue, it's a medical issue. And you have to face the fact that that's some poor choices you can make about your temper, that this all are thou. But I can't make that decision of the free country for everybody. And so we, we're trying to do it the right way. Don't allow people to paint me as some nephew or somebody who I am not. If you know me, trust what you know. And let's move to the city court. I beg you to make the decision that is right for Cam. And don't allow these people to take us backward. That's what we tried to do for the young people. But I'm telling you, there is a group that sit as gatekeepers that want to keep Cam in a certain place. And if we give the city back to them, we're going to be in a world of trouble. This will be a long time before we get an opportunity to find somebody good enough, perfect enough to ever be there again. Because you got to be perfect right now. Right. You don't have to be perfect to be anything else. You've got to be perfect to sit in this city. Look at my policies like you looked at here. What have we done? How have we helped the people? That's the question. But the question is not about what was tightening. Yes, it was, if, 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 if that was all you heard, I get it. But that's not all I am, and that's not all I've done. And if I've been patient and time with you, you can patient and time with us, and give us an opportunity to continue to work on these projects to get them done. Yes, sir. Now, I heard you say something that some people have asked me about. I've heard about a 99 year these where, where do they come in? So what happens is we kind of make some agreements in the city. Uh, there's some buildings that because of what kind of building they are, 501c3 types of buildings and stuff like that, where well, you can't just take that building and just sell it to your brother, sell it to your brother. So you do a lease because you want to keep, you have to keep control of that particular asset, all right? Um, I don't want to go too far on that one. I just want to say the 99 years, $1, you don't have to pay the $1 necessarily. It's only a contract that gives people access uh, to this building. They cover all the stuff. We have certainly been responsible. We pay insurance on some of these buildings, but some more stuff. And every eight years, every eight years or every 10 years, the planning of scene has to re up there. Can you elaborate? Well, they didn't get a 99 year, $1 deal. So you're expecting them to make an investment for our children to play basketball. They got to spend all this money on a building that they only can have for a certain length of time, and at any time, then it can come back and say, why not give them the same deal so that they won't have trepidation or fear, I should say, of making that type of investment? If I knew they had it for 99 years for one dollar, I'd give them a little bit more money. I would, because I know it's going to stay a place where our community, my family, where more people can walk to it. More kids can walk to Collins Park. It's patient. It's a better investment for some our community. And some people can try to move out, move away from them. Why are we chasing people who don't want to build well with you? Stop the foolishness. You are valuable. And when we say majority, count to know the majority. Don't just say majority because you've been trained to say majority. Count. If there's more nipples than there are pennies, then you have nipples arguing. Majority. Stuff from madness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Next question. How has your administration... This hasn't been enough. Woo! Y'all ain't got enough. Yeah. Woo! Go ahead. <laughs> How have your administration handled neighborhood reasoning? First of all, let's look at the Hispanic community. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> that is a big question. Some of you may not know. I'm going to make that money. We're sitting well, brother. <laughs> this is well with you. A black old being second. Who's the top? Brother Courtney Payne and Sister Jennifer Payne. Right here at the Cup of Joe. Yes. And they're not even open today, so they're allowing us to come in. 
and have this interview. Now, you know, this is one of the hardest interviews I, I've been in a long time. So y'all forgive me. Um, I, I used to think this was my friend. What was the question one more time? Neighborhood police. All right. All right. Ooh, so now, what has happened was uh, the, the, the fastest one growing in the Camden right now just so happens to be the Hispanic community. And so we're having to at least consider the fact that we've got to be able to communicate effectively. All right? So when we show up, we now have a police officer. And I gotta do a shout out to Pastor Sandra Cotton, finish. Pastor Sandra Cotton goes to, she goes to court, she goes wherever the Hispanic community meets her, whether, whether you go to her church or not, she serves, and she serves, I don't know where the resources come from, I don't know, I don't think anybody does anything, but says thank you and keep on going. But she has done that. But our police department got a community resource officer who speaks Spanish. So if we get into, if we come to you and there's an issue, we don't just go to fighting you and doing all that. You don't hear about us in the news like that. We're actually working on community and we're asking our community to pack and police yourselves so that we don't have to have law enforcement involved. So when we do, we do have a person who is Spanish speaking, who has the ability to help us to keep that environment where it needs to be so we can all operate within the laws. All right, also, let's talk about body cam. Yes, sir. When you say body cameras, I will also mention body rams. All right, so I want to do more. So body cameras. If a police officer engages with any citizen, his camera or her camera must be on. If that camera is on, you are blessed with three days at home if we can't see what happened. That camera starts recording 30 seconds before they even cut it on. It's a great camera. And only the supervisor has the power to do anything with that footage. It goes straight through the internet, straight to the police department. That's just how that went. Number two, we have in our community now a lot of people who deal with mental illness. But instead of our trying to obtain them, trying to contain them in, in, the, in the physical matter like that, we use a body wrap that Put some like the swaddles in pretty good. And it keeps us and her to live, and keeps them and her to live. Now you got, still on, you got to get another hand. Now you got, they're real expensive. They're real expensive. You don't ever want them to use it on you now. It's, it's going to wrap you real tight. But it'll keep you from hurting our officers. They get to go home with their family. They keep them from hurting themselves. The profession of having a mental episode. It is important that we don't treat them like a criminal if it's mental. And so we're also looking into, uh, we're looking for grants to get a psychologist to be on duty, or, or somebody to be on duty when we're dealing with certain types of issues, if we know that we're showing up to something that's mental, and it's between mental and criminal. It's a criminal act, but it's a mental episode, and because it's between the two, that we want to make sure that we treat people carefully, and we don't want to traumatize the person who's already in trauma. And we are aware that there's some people came back to war once, like the people who dealt with the a lifetime, and even some of these people who once seen COVID-19 in 2021, who have, uh, because of some things we deal with, we just need a little bit, a little bit of help to get through some of the cabin things where some of that, there's a fine level behind bars, and we have to be careful how we handle them. Our citizens, it takes all of us to make up Camden. Not just the smart group, not just the strong group, not just the same group, but all of us make up this wonderful city. Okay, last question for policing. Oh. This <laughs> did that was good, did he? Yes, sir. The crime solving rate of the administration. We don't have an 86% satisfaction crime rate in our city. That's what I That's why I didn't say crap. And, and you don't know what it takes in a culture like ours to get crime solved. So I want to just give you uh, one little hit, and I hope this helps us uh, keep the moving, because he said that was last time on crime, I don't know if the next seven days. So here is the issue. Snitches get snitched. So folk ain't tattling like they used to. Hard to be like we need. It's difficult to solve crime and communities where people is, where criminals are sticking to them. We're blessed, some of you, who commit crime, like to videotape. 
So when you do that, you do our jobs for us. But some people don't video. So when you don't videotape, we're at the mercy of those who invest to get us answers that we need. And sometimes people are not helping us to get the right answer. You say you want the crime solved, but you refuse to help us with the information you have. It delay. I ain't doing your job for you. I think the person was I ain't doing your job for you. And you may not be doing our job for us, and you may choose not to, but if you allow this person to stay out here, who's the city of not yet? So we really need you to get involved and to help what we can. And so, uh, just in case your mama didn't tell you when you left home, it is okay with that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Next question. Many people have talked about and complained about you, under your administration, about the streets, complained about the potholes in the streets. When it comes to repairing our streets, what is the proper chain of command to report? So I'm not the only elected official for the city. So we start out, if you do have contact with your alder person, your alder person can answer that quickly. Your alder person will then get in contact with me or with Director Franklin. Director Franklin will then get in touch with the streets to get it done. It's not a long chain. It's a simple chain that helps us get things done. It holds us accountable, keeps us where we need to be with answering these particular challenges. So that is the simple answer. You, you all the contact your. I was very surprised that when it came time to vote, there were many people that didn't know who the alderman was, and they knew who I was. Uh, so many people think that he's come straight to me. They're buffers, and they, they're paid positions. And they get paid to do the job. And they come in once a month. We work every day, uh, but but they but they have a job. But some of them do. They go look at the properties before they get knocked down and other things. But but they are your older person, and they are a button. And so you're not supposed to have to call straight on Now, Of course, if it's something that simply it's garbage, pick up uh, because our trucks have been down or something like that. You call all this bliss if you're not out there to knock that out. But when the big issues, it's always better when you go through the profit channel. And when you go through your older even for the garbage. We may have missed the whole street of you. If, if you've got a problem, somebody else may have the same problem. So when you follow that chain, it helps us do what we're supposed to do. Mr. Mayor, that was my next question. Do the audit inflict any role in the government? Yes, sir. Is that, that's their responsibility. Not their job is the question. They decide how much money we have to answer challenges. I don't think I can stop. But you asked me earlier about young people. Mrs. Uh, uh, Pastor Reese brought that, brought a program to the city to employ young people. And it pretty much kind of, I, I don't want to jump too far there, but it kind of mimics the program that they have in El Rayleigh, where they allow these children to work in the summer, get some money to buy their school clothes. Great program. We sat on it, sat on it, and nothing happened. Another gentleman comes in, and he says, if a person gets in the system, this is what we can do for him or for her, if they get in the system. Well, we have people who are coming with answers. But the ones who hold the purse strings, they determine if I can spend money on that particular, uh, on solving that problem. That's why it's so important for you to join in on some of these conversations. And even if you can't be a city hall, which there is a meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, even if you can't make it to the meeting, go back and watch and see how the alderman acts or responds to issues that are going on in our community. Because if they don't give me the money, we cannot save it. Sir, we cannot solve the problem. Because at the end of the day, it's not that new law, it's the nurture, it's going to cost one of them. Okay, Mr. Mayor, next question. Let's talk about your authority as the mayor to pass ordinance and resolution to accomplish your goal. What? So the, I have also what is called an executive board. I can do an executive board. So a resolution or an ordinance is a law, right? So that law is one thing. How we do the law is called a resolution. So, for example, we say, well, we're going to give this amount of money to fix this particular issue. This is who's going to, this is who's going to go to the media. This is where that's the resolution. So you got the law. We got how the law is going to be carried out. Now, I have what's called executive authority because I'm, an ex I'm the chief executive officer. That executive authority is where I have five ways in which I can decide to not do what the council said to do. They can override me by three, four, and go it and still keep what they're doing. So in this particular, my regime, uh, while we're serving, uh, we found out that there were meetings before the meeting. 
What I mean is they would go online and they would hold each other, which is illegal. It's illegal to poll each other before we get to the meeting. And when they would do it, I complained about it. And in the midst of those complaints, um, you know, so they took me out of the end. So I don't know what the vote's going to be. They know what the vote's going to be before we get. We send out the stuff on Thursday. We come in on Tuesday. And everybody know what the meeting's going to be before we get. When we got to the redistricting, that was, we built a case for redistricting. A gentleman looked at me in the eye, and I thank God for him. He looked at me in the eye and he said, man, come in, I need to talk to you for just a minute. Took me on the other side of the door and says to me, what you want to do for me, this thing is big. I just don't think Camden is ready for six blacks and two white. My question then becomes, who was in charge when it was all white? They should have had somebody like you here back then. All right. Then, when we decided to have four blacks and four whites, over time, you remember we got three five whites and, and three blacks? When, 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 um, all the initial rooms stepped down, they voted and put a, a white guy in that stiff space, so they didn't even get their own camera. All of us bad watching, not just the mayor. When you consider me right now, consider me as an elected official. Am I the only elected official in this whole county? In this whole town, who there's a recording on it, something that you have a question. So why am I the only one whose council is being done like? I read the editorials myself. I read about myself. I learn a lot of stuff that I don't even know about. I read the editorials that are being written about. I'm asking you, I beg of thee to consider the source. Why am I such a threat? Why? Why the, no, are all the county walls paid? Are all of them fixed? Oh, okay. Well, maybe we should divide up some of this stuff. You remember when we were talking about the baby, the young man, I should say, about it, the young man who drowned. That we need to do something, something, something. So I, I got cussed out by one of our elected officials. This is my head nerd to go online and say, you, um, you need to set some laws. And we don't have purview over the river. They went out there and did at the county. They made, a, they made a law at the county. And Damon Fish and the rest of them got on to them. They went back and retracted. Because they couldn't do it either. We don't have purview over the river. I told you that. Because I told you we did And you did it anyway. Why wasn't that written about a long time? They thought they had a purview. They don't know where to stay at. That, that's, I'm so, that's state, that's something else. You're talking about water. We don't hold that water. We don't put up fences and gates. You can know you ain't. You don't have that kind of power to do that. I'm not a king. I'm a mayor. I have to work in my board. Let's go. So. Yes, sir. You just really uh, answered my next question, but I want to kind of extend it out. So you're saying then, in order for you to get anything done in Camden, we have to have the support of the alderman. Yes, sir. We have to have the support of the alderman and one more cup of coffee. Cup of Joe, I'm sorry. Cup of Joe. Okay, one more cup of Joe. Whatever this was, one more time. Yes, sir. We, I could use executive order. When I got ready to do Juneteenth as a city holiday, I did an executive order. I did that because I already knew that that was a fight that wasn't even worth fighting. I might as well go and get this on. So we went on and did that. But very seldom have I, have I just taken over the do executive orders. I followed the protocols, and I have to politic. I have to sell our idea. The problem that I'm having with selling is that they're having a meeting before the meeting, and they've already determined we're not going to let anything he do work, and then they're going to tell you he ain't done nothing. When you look at that list, all you got to do is Google. Did these things actually happen? Yes, they did. And if you go back to a year, to two years ago, and you go study those, you'll see pictures of where we were at some of the rhythm guns, where we were visible, where we were doing this thing. We were doing those, these proclamations. We did that. I stepped back when people said I was in too many pictures. Never should have taken your advice because I didn't know that you'd be the same person who would say he's not in prison. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Going in the last segment. Woo! Now, going back to the comments that Miss Charlene Dunn, your opponent, has posted on Facebook five days ago that she would clean up and restore our farm, like Sandy B in the river. Water. What have you done to address those areas? Okay, so we've gotten grants to do that. What you have to understand about the gazebo is that ain't your particular gazebo. That T.K. Hatcher, uh, we, uh, uh, Thatcher, I'm sorry, H.K. Thatcher for building it. Uh, we have to work with the Corps of Engineers. You have to, when you get a grant, you have to obey the grant. So we can't just destroy it. I didn't know that when I became mayor. And that's a learning curve that you might want to get used to if you haven't decided what you're going to do. Because you, when you get in there, the first thing you do, I wish I had Jeremiah here tonight. He's a grapper. And he tell you, you got to tear stuff down. So I've been in the Tan Island State. I've been in the Beat Me Up type of state to learn. But we're going through some learning curves. And you can't go down there and just knock it down. That was my answer. If it's a danger, tear it down. No, you better not. If you tear that down, you got to pay every dime that took the bills. So we have to get a simple engine. Now, simple engineer, I don't know. You might talk about engine. That, that's one thing. An engineer is tens of that. An engine is seven feet. But an engineer, a civil engineer, you'll get seven hundred thousand dollars. Well, that being said, we have to be mindful that there are problems that we have to fix in a certain way. I, the, the restroom now is on a septic tank. It's not a regular restroom. So you can look from the top of the hill and say what we ought to do. But when you get down there and you have to do it, you have to do things within the reasons and protocol that are already established, or else you're going to find yourself in a young chill. Now, the rules that she breaks in the day-to-day -day ain't nothing compared to having to pay back the grant. That is stuff that we're going through without making these people have to pay extra money to fix something that wasn't even broken. That ain't nothing in comparison to tens of and hundreds of thousand dollars that someone has given you for something. So we have, we have sought the grants. And we're fixing those things. These are issues that we're already working on. And remember, it is easy to look at someone doing the job and talk about how they're not doing it right. It's easy to look at me doing the work and say what well, I ain't doing. But the bottom line is it ain't easy to get it done. And we are able to give answers to the question. If you'll notice tonight, I've not had to dodge the question. When he asked the question, I've been able to answer that question. When he asked me about Hispanic, I didn't talk about some, uh, some black people who were with me. I talked about the Hispanics, right? Pay attention. I'm answering what I'm being asked, and I'm being fired with you. I'm in a public forum, and we're answering as best we know how. Okay. Also, back to your moment, Ms. Charlotte Young also stated that she is going to replace where Cameron lived history billboard on Highway 79. I don't have your administration with this is that. All right. So let's let me let me back up a little bit on this. And, and I want you to understand that. Camden has three different sites. Where history lives, Star of the River, Queen of the Washington. No, it's born there, is it? And what else? Quincy City. Star of the Washington. So when we say that, the first thing we were doing was getting ready to go with Survey Monkey. All right? And in Survey Monkey, I'm going to allow the community to choose the one we're going to go with. When you're coming in over here by uh, H.K. Thatcher, the very old by Sandy Beach, when you come in that way, it's Star of the River. When you come in that way, over here on um, what's the, the bypass, it says where you still live. It depends on where you come into town, who we are. The first thing we got to do is decide well, we want to be. And that is the first stage, is picking and choosing the mantra. So it isn't that we're not working on that. The first thing is, we're going to use survey marketing to see what we want to do and try to get every person to vote on what works. And then we will choose one brand for our city. But we've got to start at some basics. Yes, I see how raggedy that side is. But, with some of the money that you made, you can replace it without being made, right? You can, if you want to fix something, you can fix it 
without a position. I've done it several times. When I've seen poverty or someone lacking something, I didn't ask them to buy mouths and you just buy them a plate of food. Right? And you, if you're hungry, if you see a child hungry, I ain't got to be a daddy to feed him. I can feed him because he's hungry. And I'm saying to you, all these problems that you see, you can't fix them unless you come and take the position that you know is not rightfully yours. You know, if both of us are Christians, God said yes to somebody. The pastor said no to somebody. If both of us are true to believers, then there's a yes somewhere and there's a no somewhere. And I'm hoping that you and I will participate with God in this way. I've already passed some of those hurdles. We've already had to learn some of those hard lessons. Give us an opportunity to bring it to fruition the things that we've already been working on. We already have the grant. So if someone else walks in and say they solved the problem, the problem was halfway there before you walked in. We already got a solution to that. Yes, sir. I also want to go. Another controversial topic that was voted on and passed down, but yet, as I drive around in Camden as a community leader, I see that made it though. But the thing is, the entertainment district, what is that in which you support? The answer to your question is yes, I, I will support. The native dog. If you notice, I didn't look at my wife, I didn't look at my pastor, I didn't look at this father. I said the answer is yes. I was support because when an adult gets ready to leave, he doesn't have to make the choices I decide to make. If he decides that he wants to go out and get a bleach cake before he goes home, he ought to be able to get whatever he wants to eat and to drink. All right? That's the bottom line. Now, not only that, if we're not careful, those people who are coming here and who are working in the area are going to skip last back camp and go with El Dorado, Magnolia, back to Hot Springs, Pittenville, or wherever they live if we keep making this a sleeper time. I'll give you any drink, I'll tell you, don't stop. But the people who do, Chuck, don't get in the way of that. The wrecks and the other things that they were talking about, they were happening coming out to the VFW. Go back and do your own research. They were not happening from these restaurants here. These restaurants in our city are too afraid of letting you leave drunk to get you drunk before you get out of their establishment. That's foolishness. That ain't happening in our city. That's not where these drunk drivers were coming from. Go back and check it for yourself. It don't say here. It don't say I, I, I wish you up. Go back and look at the incident with the police officer. That was my restaurant. Don't let people poison you. Our restaurants are making good decisions. Our retailers are making good decisions. Do not box them in with all this other foolishness that's going right across the country. We got nothing to do with Mark. I see you what to do. We are mature adults. We don't want you to make the decisions for us. It's a free country. We can do right for ourselves. Insert clap. All right, then you elaborate on the recovery. Okay, entertainment history. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't just say I had to put some entertainment history to me. It's this time. It would be something like entertainment music itself. It, it is named that because it, is, it allows people to have an open container inside of a certain, uh, certain let's say, a certain street, a certain gallery. That's insane. When that came up, the police department let them know what they could and could not handle. We cannot have an open container city, but we could have open container blocks. And so we decided where the whole weather area would be. The truth be told, whenever we had a chili cook off, guess what? It was in a country. First Friday, first Friday has also been an entertainment this Don't let the French trick them pull the wool over your eye. They have beer gardens right here at the corner. It was a beer garden. I didn't ask for a beer garden. Someone else asked for a beer garden, and I had food. So don't try to play sanctimonious on me today. And I said, you ain't never had a drink. Them are wall people who sat right there and had a drink because you had an event where you want the city to okay, the city okay, and when we okay it for you, it is all right. We want to okay it for somebody else, and you come with your preacher and say no. You come and say no. Well, why was it right the other day when you did? 
Yes, sir. Last two questions, mate. All right. If reelected as the mayor of Camden, Arkansas, yes, sir. what would be your vision for the community of Camden as a whole going forward? Okay, so first of all, many people have complained about the students, right? So we have a five-year plan to fix every student in Camden. Camden, if you look at town, if you go to Magnolia, Magnolia is 4.4 square miles. Camden is over 18 miles. So we have a lot of street here. Do you understand what I'm saying? But with the plan that we have, we have $900,000 to fix streets next year. 900000 Always there. We wrote for a grant in 2019, got $300,000. We're going to spend $6,000 because we didn't spend money in 2020, 2021. So we're taking over $6,000 plus $600,000 plus $300,000, which is $900,000 to fix streets. That's, that's the first thing. Number two, that five-year plan is going to be looking for. Number two is that we are, com we are right now working on the controversial issue of how to go forward with sports. With sports, we also have to consider that some children don't like athletics. Some of them are into the arts. Some of them are into academics. And we want to make sure that we enhance the STEM type of things. Working with the student, the city of Camden has gone in and done the uh, fill in the potholes at the school. We filled in the potholes at the public housing. Insert player, insert player. We did that. We did that. We've been putting the stop signs back and doing things like that, beautifying those areas. Also, uh, we have what's called a 20 year intermingling bank. Don't stumble. It's a big way of saying we got a place where bicycles ride, and when you go past the day and night on Washington, there's no sidewalk. So that intermodal plan means we're going to make it possible for people to walk. It's a, it's a, what, Dollar General over there. People need to be able to walk to the store. So we want to do, that's the part of intermodal. Right in front of my church corner here, you see where there's a bike lane. All right? That is, that's the part of that intermodal plan. You can get to Cameron from anywhere. We have railway. We have highway. We have airway. Uh, we have byway. Now we got, we got, we got waterway. You can get here from anywhere, and we want to make sure that we're working toward using the water that we have and making sure that we are working toward getting a community development as well as economic development. And that's not like saying we are put pressure on all people to bring businesses inside Washington County. The areas that we shout about, the taxes come back to Calhoun guy. All right? We need industry inside the city. And they're working with us to get the job done. They came back to us with more money, and um, they have a 20-year water sewer plan. So some of the people got mad and said, you didn't fix my street, you didn't fix my street. And you're right. The reason is because the plan says that in March, this is where we're doing the water sewer. So if we fix your street right now, and your street is in line in March for the water line to be laid, what? See, when you don't know, you fuss. And you don't know because you didn't have them. I, I didn't know that you were mad. I thought you would see us doing some of the work and get excited. But when we get rid of that water line, we would have to start all over again with that error. And so we didn't do certain streets because they were in line after the water pipes are made. All right? That's the infrastructure part of our vision. I didn't know how old our city was. That some streets haven't been touched since 1927. I didn't know that. And so when they went through and they took the streets and they figured it out, they said, ain't nothing left here. Those are some of the things that we plan to do. Working with organisms that are already employed by us, not competing with them. Let me say that one more time for the people in the back. Working with the people we're paying, not competing with them. Since I've become mayor, we have actually asked those groups that get money from the city to report. They weren't even made to report. They wouldn't even require us to say what they did with the money. And we've done that. That's the problem. The problem is accountability, and we've been very transparent in our leadership. All right? Yes, sir. Last question. How do you address the board in your time? All right. We're going to talk to this. All right. So I encourage every person who believes and desires for a future for Ken to vote Julian Lyon for me. 
I'm not asking for your vote because you're black, because you're white, because you're gay, because you're straight. I'm asking for your vote because I believe the future of our city depends on not surrendering to the group of people who you said existed when I got here. I did not, this group is not a figment of my imagination. They're not something that I have made up when I moved here. The citizens told me that there were people who had this city in a head. I'm asking you to support us in this upcoming election. Vote me a lot for a better Camden. Don't sign for people who are using better Camden. And when a person says they want to unify Camden, what does unity look like? Does it look like all of us? Or does it look like a select few that you're meeting with in the back corner of some church where only a white congregation goes? If you want to be fat for the future of our city, all of us are not straight, all of us are not white. It takes all of us to make this community, and I'm the best decision. We've already come through some of those learning curves. We've already had to learn about bureaucracy the hard way. I need your support, and we need your vote as a city for this upcoming election. November 29th is the first day. December 6th is actually election day. I need you to show up and show out in this upcoming election because our community is counting on you and the children who are coming behind you need you to do the right thing. Once again, as we sign up tonight, we want to again thank the couple of Joe. Woo! Come <laughs> Can y'all step up here right quick? Okay, they don't want to be seen, but the couple of Joe. Hey, What's the address? Address? 112 Adam, Camden, Arkansas. Camden, Arkansas. Down here, and we want to say time out. Thank, thank Mr. Mayor for uh, this opportunity to be able to sit down with him and the viewers of uh, voters in this city to be able to. All right. All right. Oh, yeah, 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 I see. Yeah. Please go. At 100,000, plus up on Google. This is for a cup of Joe. <laughs> yeah, 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 come on. <laughs> All right, so they want 100,000, what's that, likes or? Yeah, get 100,000 likes and give a great review. I can testify. Oh, no, no, I don't know. I can testify that the coffee is good. I, I have a reputation for what they call the uh, res, uh, strawberry, strawberry delight. And I can almost, uh, almost promise by they're closed on Sundays and Mondays, but Tuesdays from 7 to 3, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, 7 to 3. Wi-Fi? Unless they have live music and they go from 7 to 8. And then on Saturdays from 7 to 1, and the hours may vary on Saturday. So thank you so much. How do I do? So, but yeah. There are people coming here and they do work on their computers. There are people coming here to read. There's soft music in the background. Often, there ain't a whole lot of noise. And so it's wonderful. It's a great atmosphere. And these are people who love God. And I believe their love on you. I can almost guarantee that there's no time you could ever come in here and catch them off of their A game. I've been trying and I've been unsuccessful. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> All right. Uh, the seven five. We just write the cameras for a minute. He wants to talk off camera. Don't forget, November 29th is the first day of voting. If you have the opportunity and you know people, can you go to those people and encourage them to vote? The problem that we had, we did not show up. When I say we did not show up, I assure you that our community did not show up. If we have 12,000 people in this county, 12,000, oh no, 22,000 people in this county. 22,000 people in this county. We have 10,000 people in this city. A hundred, two hundred, three hundred of us should not determine which sit the next. Tell everybody who knows, we can on it. 
I want to say thank you again to you, Pastor. Uh, it was very uncomfortable, uh, but I'm glad I didn't know everything. I, I'm glad that you handled me the way you handled me. Uh, I thought it was fair to them that was just painful for me. Thank you so much. I love you, and we're back. Huh? No. <laughs> I love you, Bishop. <laughs> thank you.